So, so far what we've done is this part of the picture, right? Not even, we did this, right? We have basically this posting to Twitter. Make sense? Um, so, what I would like to do next is, um, let's skip uh, two, let's, let's get straight to three, which is basically uh, dealing with, with, uh, with uh, services, because that's an, that's an interesting topic. So, what we want to do here is we want to uh, create a very simple service and have it start and have it stop. Like just to kind of illustrate what goes on, how it's working, uh, and, and 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 that sort of stuff, right? Uh, so to do that, we're gonna create a new, uh, just like any main build, building block. The following steps are always the same. To create a new main building block, you're gonna create a new Java file first. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new class, and I'll call it Updater Service. Press enter. <coughs> so, just like before, to um, you you never start from writing stuff from scratch. You usually basically subclass something from the system. So in this case, we're gonna subclass service. Organize imports. You got to use your common sense which one you want to import. Okay, and add un unimplemented methods. So this is basically a, a, a little service in a nutshell. Now we have to implement this on bind method. Uh, we have to have it. We don't have to implement it. We're actually not going to worry about it. We're going to ignore it for the time being. This bind method has to do with a binder um, with a, um, bound services, which, which is not what we're doing today. We're going to do that much later on. So basically, for now, just successfully ignore that method. Okay. Um, so the common things, if you remember in a service, were start, create, uh, on create, on start, and on destroy. So I would usually implement all these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go source, override implement methods. And I'm going to find on create, on destroy, and on start. It's actually on start command because on start has been deprecated. So, so you want on create, on destroy, and on start command. Okay. Uh, usually, I just move on start before the on destroy, just because it makes a little more sense. So far, so good. Now, what we also do here is well, services are invisible; we can't really see them run. Right, for the most part. So it's very useful to know what happened. So uh, what I like to do is I like to put my log these to basically be able to visualize what's going on with my code, right? So I usually define my static final string tag. Right? I usually get rid of all the to-dos. And then I put a log D, log.d, tag comma, on created.
organize imports, import log, and that's it. So basically what you have so far is you have the, the shell or the template for any service. Right, that most these types of services you they're gonna look like this. And by the way, you guys may remember that I gave you a document called uh, uh, Main Building Blocks. Yes, it didn't. Uh, so let me uh, CD CD. Uh, okay, Uh, let's see. So this one is useful. Uh, so I'm gonna copy HTML to So this file, mainbuildingblocks.html, um, and you basically have the you know these versions of like various things pre-canned. Like these are you know what I did is I kind of um, commonly used methods. I put them here. Things that are sort of like template. Things that you could just copy paste into stuff, right? So for example, if you're looking uh, for a service, there's the life cycle. And like I said, this is this would be a template for a typical service. So in the future, you know, if you don't want to do this, you can just copy paste it and say I'm done with it, right? Make sense? Cool. So um, after we create a Java class, what would be the next thing that we must do for any main building block? Uh, to the application manifest. Yeah. So we would need to add it to the manifest file, yes. So we need to define it. So open up your manifest file. Okay. Somewhere within this man application block, right, you need to define the service. So it needs to be equal level citizen to activity. So what I would do is I would do control space service control space name and then for the name you put a class name right so updater service Okay, but what is the full-fledged <coughs> name of this class? Yeah, so it's going to be the com.example.yamba.updater service. Now, a shortcut for typing all that is to basically just say dot updater service. That basically knows that now it's in the package, so it takes advantage of that. Unless you want to type the whole thing, which you could. Okay, so now that we have this service, the question is how do we actually kickstart it? How do we get it to run? What was the glue between main building blocks? Intents, yeah. So, um, so we need to fire up an intent to to start up the service, right? The question is just now how we're going to trigger that intent. We could just put it somewhere and say start a service and be done with it. But it'd be nice to actually create some kind of uh, you know button or menu system to actually do that, right? Okay. So this service is more, for more more or less done for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close all these files to remove the clutter. Okay. And let's talk about how to do the menu. 
So how do you think you do the menu? We've never done it, Maha. Menu object in the in the um, UI uh, the Okay, so it's like a, it's like a UI. So we in the UI we started by doing things in where? Yeah. In XML first, right, and then we switch over to Java, right? So let's see what Android has to offer for menu. So select resources and go file new Android XML file. So on the resource type, there's actually a menu type, okay? So select that. And for the name, you can put something like menu.xml, for example. Click, okay, finish, right? Now, Eclipse is buggy, right? So this is not the proper way to look at it. Menu. So I'm gonna try to do this again. I'm gonna go and I right click and I say open with menu editor. It's a little better. So let's create a menu. So by the way, the menu we are creating is going to be the menu that shows up at the bottom of the app uh, device when you click on like the menu button, right? So the menu we're working on is the menu that shows up when you click on this menu button. Okay, it looks like this, right? Something like that. Make sense? So um, let's create a new item. Now, just like before, you are creating a uh, some kind of like a, almost like a UI element, and you can specify gazillion different properties. It's not as bad as before, um, but not everything matters as much, right? The properties that you care about you know, universally is the ID and probably the title, right? So for ID, Eclipse already gives you something like at plus ID item one, right? Which is meaningless. So I'm going to rename it. This is going to be our start service menu item. So I'm going to say menu item start service. Okay. The other thing that we care about is title. So I could say simply start service. But what's wrong with that? Language. Yeah, well, it's not just lang a language thing, but it's, suppo it's supposed to be externalized into a strings XML. Right? Mm -hmm. So, um, let me see, is there a shortcut for this? No. Okay, so what you want to do, um, as opposed to doing it like that, you want to say browse, you want to say new string, you want to say the um, give it a key, so start service, for example. Right. Click on OK, that, that's it, OK. So basically, this is now referring to that. You no longer can copy this for me, right? Because this now refers to something that I actually have implemented in another file. So don't copy just this piece of text. Right? There needs to be a relationship. This is pointing to a value called start service. Make sense? I didn't type it there. All right, so you guys now do the stop service. Same idea. So click on add. Make sure you add an item. If you, By the way, if you have this selected, then clicking on add is going to think that you want to add a sub-menu to an item which is not what you want to do. So in that case, you would have to click on here and say item, right? Okay. 
So you want another item, vehicle level citizens. Right? So item stop service title. Again, we inject quickly a new string, new string, stop service. That's it. Save it. Save the file. So as part of this, we basically we generated the file that looks like this. You can control shift F and format it to look it to make it look prettier. If you just care about it, but basically we have a menu with two items in it. Okay. Now, how do we get this menu now to show inside of the activity? Well, for that, we're gonna open our status activity. And what we're going to do is we're going to add two methods. Well, I'll add them to the bottom. It doesn't really matter where you add it. Two methods. Uh, one is called something like on create options menu. The other one is called something like on options item select or something like that. But again, use source override implement methods because you don't want to memorize this stuff. So I'm looking for something to do with on create options menu, and there, there's, there it is. Yeah, on create options menu is one. The other one is on options item selected. Those are the two. Click on enter. So that, that's our menu stuff now. It goes here, right? Remove the to dos. So far, so good. So, um, on create options menu is called first time that user clicks on this guy, on this menu button here. So it's only called once. First time user clicks on it. Okay. As such, it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to create the actual menu. So in other words, menu system is lazily initialized First time user clicks on it. If user never clicks on it, it doesn't create the menu system, right? Because who cares about it? So, um, what you want to do here? Okay, yeah. So, the question about the menu button um, in uh, Honeycomb, they uh, Honeycomb doesn't have buttons. Right? There's no physical. There are no physical buttons on a tablet. Um, but there's uh, there's something called an action bar, right? So it's always present, and that basically replaces all that. So action bar actually uses the very same system as the um, as these you know other versions. Okay, it's just that the menu system is not going to be a button that comes from the bottom, but it's going to be an action bar at the top, and when you press, it pulls down from the top. It has a couple of additional features, but other than that, it's all the same. Your code is going to be exactly the same. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it's got it's got the menu button. Uh, it's got the soft menu button because it's using the uh, the, the theme. Yeah. So it's a, it's a software based button, but it uh, it does the same methods get called. And that's a tab, right? Next is Galaxy, Galaxy tab. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So there are the three icons. The top two. Uh huh. Like back, home, and uh, multitask. There's no menu. Uh, so, so the menu button should be then part of the action bar. So, so, so it should be part of this action bar. Yeah. It's usually the little. Um, it's usually the little like couple of lines, and you press on it and it pulls down. No, 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 not always. That's what I was saying. On Honeycomb, uh, the menu is going to be actually at the top. No, the other, the other platform. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to be There's on the bottom. No, no. Yeah. not as an app developer. Like for example, yeah, the, you know, the buttons. Okay, so uh, basically for the menu stuff, so on create. You need to return true if the menu was successfully created. So I usually just change this to return true. Uh, I don't see why it wouldn't be successfully created. So the way this works is the way it's documented to work is you are given an empty menu object. You are to populate it. So what I could do is I could create, you know, don't do this, but I could do, um, you know, menu is new menu, you know, and you can do menu dot add, let's see that add, right, and then sub menu or blah, 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 and so on, right? You could do stuff like that programmatically. But instead of doing that, we're going to load it from XML because it's easier, right? So to load it from XML, we need an inflator that's going to be able to parse XML and inflate the menu. Okay, so that's readily available to us. We do Control Space, Get Menu Inflator, Dot Inflate, and it's asking you what resource into what object. Right, so this goes to XML, loads the data, puts it into your object. So our users are going to be r, sorry, r dot menu dot, and there it is, menu. And the menu is going to be menu. Oops. Uh, okay. So we now have the menu, right? Inflated. As a matter of fact, if you run your code now, should be able to see your menu. Uh, built install, time off. So it can be XML file if you have menu for your node as it's a menu one. Would there are many menu one? Yeah, if you name it menu one. Yeah. The first menu is gonna be always menu, but the second one may not be. So let me see what's going on with my uh, emulator. Some reason my emulator died again. It's not supposed to do that. Does it work? Works, you get it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I had to reboot my emulator for whatever reason. Okay. So, uh, back to this. So now, every time a menu item is actually clicked on, which I can't show you right now because my emulator is still booting up. 
Um, what we're going to get is we're going to get this call being called in with the actual item being passed in. So if you click on start service item, it's going to call on option site to select it and it's going to tell you this item and such and such, you know, clicked on, right? So what we want to do is we want to basically handle different items calling back into this method, right? The good thing about this is that you can use a switch statement because Android uses integers for IDs. So here's what we can do that's elegant. Switch on item dot get item ID. <coughs> Now you can have your case statements then. You can have case r dot id r dot id dot item start service do something case r dot id dot item stop service do something then you can have default so if it's not handled So far so good? So, typically what you would want to do is once you're done doing something for start service, you want to return uh, the, the, the boolean that on, on option setting selected returns is true if you handled it, false otherwise. So false means we didn't handle the processing, this button goes to else, uh, somebody else possibly. Right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to re return true here. Right, return true here, and then return false. And then we're not going to return anything here. So you have an elegant little um, switch statement which you can now expand as much as you want. Right? The question is, how do we start a service? And you guys said, by using an intent, right? So how do you use an intent? Define a new intent, make, make it explicit, and then fire it. Uh, we don't have to define it in a manifest file. Uh, we, uh, we can actually use an in, uh, in explicit intent, right? So what I can do is something like this, right? I can say, let me create an intent. Um, yeah, I'll uh, create an intent. Intent. New intent. Organize inputs. Now, there are multiple ways to create an intent. You can create an empty intent. You can create an intent with a piece of text in it. But the intent that we want to create is the one that's going to take uh, the context, so this, and the destination. So that's going to be an explicit intent. So it's going to look like this. This, comma, and then the destination. And the destination is going to be updater service dot class. This would refer to the activity, which actually is a context. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so what we need to pass in here, the this represents the context, which activity is a subclass of. Yeah. Good? Okay, so now the question is, what do we do for, in this case, for start service? Well, we're going to simply say start service for that intent intent okay. 
And in this case, we do the opposite. We say stop service for that intent. Yes, so this in this case refers to the, the, the class itself or the instance of the object itself, which in our case is a status activity. And status, status activity is a subclass of context. So we are basically passing a context. That's what we need to pass. <coughs> no, it doesn't. Okay. It can, but it doesn't by default. Yeah. So we'll see all about that. Okay, so now if I run, do I have my emulator up? I do. So if I do a uh, run. Oops. Uh, yeah, I do have it up, but it doesn't know about it. Oh. Okay, so now it does. It's loading my service. So, what we now have is a service. Uh, we have a, our activity. Right? So, now if I do menu, there's my menu. Start, stop. Right? If I say start, There's my updater service. Create it, start it. Right? If I say stop, it actually stopped. It got destroyed. Right? What happens if I do uh, what if what happens if I do let me clean this up? I do start, start, start. So start, so create it, start it. What happens if I do start again? Me, I felt it, so you guys can actually see it. Okay, so menu, start service, started. Then you start service, start it. So it keeps on starting it, but it doesn't keep on creating it. Right? If I do menu destroy, it's going to destroy it. If I do menu start, it's going to recreate it. And then start. Okay. Now, if, I'm menu, if this is running, right? I mean, it's not doing anything, right? So it's just in a running state. In other words, our, st our, our service finished this code. It didn't really do much. Right? So what we can do next is we can uh, go to the... Uh, I can go to the... Remember manage, uh, manage services, manage running applications? We go menu, manage applications. See. Running. Yamba. So there's one process and one service, right? Yeah, I can actually, so that's our updater service, that's the service we started. So it's run, running, quote unquote running, although it's not doing much, right? What I could do now is I could do stop, and you can say, notice that this got called on destroy. So it's all good, you know, that's just what it does, it says stop the service. Okay, so that's basically how this works. So how would you now add to this service to pull from Twitter?
Okay. So where would you do that? Okay, so you'd create a new Twitter object. Right, so I may do something like this. Twitter, Twitter, right? You're saying instant organize imports. You're saying instantiate it here, right? So Twitter is new Twitter, and then you copy paste that username password. So student then password, right? Then you set your API root, so Twitter. That's set. You can copy paste this, right? I'm just typing it because. Okay, done. So where would you now pull the data from Twitter? Uh, the, the method is get public timeline or something like that, but where would you use it? On create, on start, on destroy, on blind. On start, okay. So I could do something like this in on start, right? I could say Twitter dot get, I think it's get public timeline, right? And that returns a list of statuses. Control Shift O. Now be careful when you import statuses. There's, it's a common name. You want the last one. You want the Twitter dot status. That's the one that we are referring to by status. We are not talking about Wi-Fi async task or SSL engine. We're talking about Twitter, right? So make sure you import the right status, otherwise everything goes to, uh, you know, haywire. So presumably this is where we get our tweets, right? There's a list of sta uh, time, uh, statuses in timeline, right? What if I just wanted to, what, what do you want to do with this list now? We ultimately want to show it in the UI, but we got what ten minutes left, so it's not going to happen, right? So, but in the spirit of being, or you know, always, well, always whole and complete, what what's the simplest thing to do? Yeah. We could do toss. We could, you know, we can print it out or log, right? And something like that, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna use the log. So are you guys familiar with the for each loop? Does this make sense, this notation, to some of you? For those of you who learned Java before 2005, uh, this basically means for, for, for a go over timeline and each iteration assign the current value into this, right? Okay. So, I can now say log.d tag comma and let's imagine that I just want to simply print out who says what. Right. Are you guys familiar with the uh, uh, stringed format? Do you, okay. Do you remember printf in C? Okay, so it's like printf for Java, right? So it goes like this. It goes string dot format, right? And then you say format, comma variables, right? So my format may be percent s colon percent s. That's who said what, right? And then values are going to be status dot user dot name comma status dot text for instance. So that simply iterates over the entire list and prints out who said what, right? And this links to that, right? And then this links to that, right? You can, you can do concatenation. Yeah. What if I wanted three parameters? I mean, we, you know, you have plus, space, plus, blah, blah, blah. I just, yeah, this is a little cleaner. 
It's designed for this kind of purposes. Oh. Like, so this call could die, right? You guys. So the proper way would be to actually wrap this try catch block, right? Because we don't know, we don't control the network, gazillion things could go wrong, password is wrong, access denied, blah blah blah, right? So I'm just gonna simply wrap it in a try catch block. Because you don't want something to die here, because then the service is not gonna be able to start. Okay, so let me run it again. Okay, menu, start service, died, okay, so I had it die as well, on create, block at, aha, we have the same problem, network on our main thread, right, right, in our Auditor service line 28. That's the problem. Bam. Not allowed to do this. I'm sorry? Yeah. Remember, so for those of you on older versions, this may work. For those of you on newer versions, this may not work. So if I just want to get it quickly tested, I'm going to do this source surround with. Thread, bam. And then I'm going to run it. Yes, that's exactly the problem. So menu, start service, there we go, bam, worked. And these are the tweets, who said what, student, hi there, bam, bam, bam. I just took that thing and wrapped it in a try block, but I also wrapped it in a, tri in a, in a thread, and that's it. This is a, we're gonna fix this. This is not a final, right? But it's the same issue we had with the uh, UI. That kind of just proves to you that this is really truly running on UI thread, right? Why is the service running on a UI thread? Why is the service running on a UI thread? That's how they designed it. And I don't know exactly why, but there is an alternative. So we'll look into that alternative shortly. So everyone's following this, right? Um, any questions, comments, concerns? We just started with services. There's more stuff that we need to do with this.